Thanks for joining us on Nationwide Live on the network service of the NTA. I'm Ian Ray John. Welcome. President Muhammad Buhari's inauguration for a second term in office, slated for the 29th of this month, is to be a low-key affair. The Minister of Information, Lai Muhammad, who announced this while briefing State House correspondents, said the decision was taken at the meeting of the Federal Executive Council last Wednesday. He said a number of the events usually come in along with presidential inaugurations will now be held during the first observance of the National Democracy Day on the 12th of June. The inauguration will take place 29th of May. It will be low key. Since the first observance of June 12 as Democracy Day falls into an election year, and as a measure to sustain June 12 as Democracy Day, the celebration of the inauguration and the advancement of democracy in the country will now take place on June 12. Invitations have been sent to all world leaders to attend the ceremonies marking the observance of the Democracy Day. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo quotes the minister saying that details of the events slated for both the presidential inauguration and Democracy Day ceremonies will be unveiled at a world press conference on the 20th of this month. Moving on, Zainab Habibu Aliu, the young Nigerian lady wrongfully detained by Saudi authorities for alleged drug trafficking, has finally returned home. This was after the federal government facilitated her release about two weeks ago. Abdullahi Mustafa captured her arrival at the Malam Aminu Kano International Airport and sent in this report. This was the formal handover of Zainab Aliu to the personnel of the Malam Aminu Kano International Airport Command of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and DLEA by officials of the Nigerian Foreign Service. Her parents and relations were already on ground at the airport VIP lounge to receive her. traveling passengers now need to be more careful. Everybody is now aware that something like this can happen, can happen to anyone. As official documentation by the NDLA officials ended, more family members, friends and well-wishers arrived at the airport to receive Zainab. I can't say anything. <laughs> Just alhamdulillah. Zainab returned alongside Abu Bakr Ibrahim, who was also erroneously detained by Saudi authorities over a similar allegation. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Family, friends, and well wishers have been looking forward to seeing this moment. I sincerely thank to Almighty Allah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I thank Nigerians, I thank President Muhammad Buhari, in whose, uh, through his own wisdom and directive, that my daughter has been released and I'm with her now in Nigeria. I feel happy and I say all my praise to Allah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Today we are very happy that our little innocent Zainab has arrived to Kano at last. So this brings uh, to raise the issue of Zainab. Aliu, who has been arrested for six months in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, wrongfully. She's now going out of the airport to meet the rest of the family and friends at home. Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. 
And now talking security, troops of Operation Lafia Dole in collaboration with local vigilantes and clearance operation have rescued 54 women and children from Boko Haram terrorist camps in Malasua and Yagamuye villages in Borno State. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sergei Musa, indicates that the terrorists fled on sight in the troops. Similarly, at Zari, Kasake and Damachiri villages, mobile local government troops destroyed two vehicles and a terrorist camp. In another development, a police sergeant has been arrested at Jimitilo checkpoint along Meiduguri Damachiri Road in possession of two magazines, 146 rounds of 762 millimeters special ammunition. The presidential delegation led by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyema, and Director General, National Emergency Management Agency, Musafa Mihaja, who is also part of the delegation, arrived in Malawi to deliver on the presidential mandate for the support of victims of recent flooding and wind storm in Malawi, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. The delegation was received by the Nigerian High Commissioner to Malawi, Ambassador Stanley Womolimi. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. The 8th of March 2019 was indeed a tragic day for the people of Malawi as flooding triggered by heavy rainfall caused the death of at least 60 people and displaced about 100,000 people with houses and public infrastructure including farmlands destroyed. The minister on arrival reaffirmed the commitment of the Nigerian government to continue to play the big brother role of advancing support in all areas of concern. He described the disaster that befell the people of Malawi as monumental and appealed to other countries of the world to lend support. And this gesture uh, is uh, because President Muhammad Buhari feels and believes that Malawi and the people of Malawi uh, are brothers and that we have uh, uh, ties that uh, the, the common blood that flows through through our veins. The minister who addressed Nigerians in Malawi advised them to be good ambassadors of the country. And I would like to congratulate you all and tell you how proud we are of, of you that you are flying the Nigerian flag so high here in, uh, in Malawi. Items including drugs and other relief items worth more than $250,000 and a cash donation of $500,000 has been advanced to Malawi for the upkeep of victims of the disaster. From Lilongwe, capital city of Malawi, Ilyasu Ali Yakubu, NTA News. And from Malawi, we head to Canada, where the first Nigeria-Canada Investment Summit, which took place in Abuja last year, is yielding positive dividends, as many Canadian investors have shown interest in the next edition coming up later in the year. Our correspondent, Joe Sagu, on an investment roadshow, tells us more about the areas of interest. Toronto in Ontario was the first stop of the road show put together by the Niger High Commission in Canada and the Niger Canada Investment Summit team. The goal is to let Canadian investors know the economic growth opportunities in Nigeria and why they should attend the next investment summit. It turns out that Nigeria already has Canadian ambassadors selling the nation to their business counterparts. It's a huge economy with uh, lots of opportunities for Canadians in areas where we have a real comparative advantage. Mining, uh, oil and gas, agriculture are just examples. And so part of our job and part of our mission is really to encourage those Canadian companies to uh, spread their wings a little bit and look abroad to see where those opportunities are. We want to be able to bring affordable housing into Nigeria, uh, renewable energy, power. We want to be able to bring those companies to, to Nigeria when it comes to increase in power accessibility. We want to be able to put money into the tech ecosystem in Nigeria so that we could drive tech investments, which will drive small businesses, which will drive the economy. We picked six key sectors because there are sectors in which we believe there's adequate basis for collaboration between Nigeria and Canada. Those are areas where there are all kinds of opportunities for foreigners to come, and areas where Canadians have demonstrated competence. Those who indicated interest in various sectors of the economy are looking forward to the next edition of the summit in Abuja before the end of the year. 
In Toronto, Canada, Joy Oseago, NTA News. In other news, the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund and SITF Management Board has been inaugurated by the Minister of Labour and Productivity, Dr. Chris Ngege. Doing DA reports that while inaugurating the board at the banquet hall of the presidential villa, Dr. Chris Ngege charged the board members to restore public confidence in their administrative duties. Yeah. Twelve members of the managing board taking the oath of office, Minister of Labor and Productivity, Dr. Chris Ngege, condemned financial misappropriations amounting to billions of naira by the former board, some of which he said are being investigated. The new board members he noted have gone through various screenings, including asset declaration and a search a fit to deliver on the mandates which amongst others includes workers' welfare and prompt payment of entitlements. In this regard, you are particularly to be guided by circular number SGFOP, SOP1, SOP S3, T1 slash 142 of 2nd August 1999 and the guidelines to administrative procedure in the Federal Public Service. The new board chairman, Austin Enajemo Isire, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria, promised to key into the developmental agenda of the federal government for better living condition of the average worker in Nigeria. We will do our best to change the narratives. We are all genuine people who believe that everybody must be taken care of you know, in the space. The important thing is the resolution of the conflict, and I think we've been able to achieve that. The inauguration of this board put to rest the much controversy surrounding its delay, especially between the Labour Union and the Minister of Labour. From the State House Banquet Hall in Abuja, Dumi, Dia, NC News. Many thanks, Doyne. Workers at the Transmission Company of Nigeria headquarters in Abuja on Monday resisted members of the Trade Union Congress from locking them out of their offices. The planned picketing, which led to a rowdy situation, was quickly curtailed by security agents. Emmanuel Ayemiro reports. Despite an attempt to picket the Transmission Company as early as 7 o'clock in the morning, Work has continued unhindered. While the Trade Unions Congress alleged an unfair labor practice leading to the protest, a local chapter of the Senior Staff Association of Electricity and Allied Companies is of the opinion that such allegation does not exist. If there is a recalcitrant <coughs> management, we will tell the management that you are not above the law. The Ministry of Labor has invited us severally he has refused to attend to the Ministry of Labor. So we want to know whether he is above the law. It is not true. I will say if you are opportune to visit all our stations and sample opinion, you will discover that all they said is not adequately true. It's not true. There is nothing like unfair practice. Everything is done on merit. This to tell you that there is no uh, labor problem in, in TCM. If there is, then you will have seen our staff joining them. It's a problem of one man who was former staff of uh, Disco, who we are suspecting is working for those people who are benefiting from the power sector, the, uh, power sector, especially the crisis in the power sector. The premises housing TCN and other agencies remained opened as the TUC protesters withdrew. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTNU. Minister of Transportation, Brutimia Meiji, has directed the Nigerian Railway Corporation to carry out a fast audit of property to be affected by the construction of a Papa section of the Lagos Ibadan Rail project. The minister who gave the directive while on an inspection tour said challenges along the Lagos corridor is delaying the speedy completion of work, unlike the Ibadan axis. Oinaya Kaluwoka brings us details. 
It was an interesting inspection that had a little bit of drama and intrigues as the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amici, had many stops to get first hand information. At their Papa Corridor of the Lagos Ibadan Rail Project, some tenants who claimed to have paid the Nigerian Railway Corporation had receipts of 2015. This land is created by Nigerian Railway Property. Huh? No, they are to go. There is no easy argument about that. Who rented this land? Maybe it's just a uh, your so, staff. No, it's your husband and staff. How do you gain access to railway property without railway? And they say they pay them to railway property. Where's your receipt? Two fifteen. Yes, I just managed. Yes, I just managed. This is twenty fifteen. The minister directed that NRC should carry out quick audit of property in order to identify the status of ownership. I've almost cleared those decisions, so we believe that by uh, June, construction from Iju to Papa will commence at a faster speed. Because these interferences have the penchant for delaying the projects, but the Honourable Minister clearly understands all these challenges and is providing us with, with guidance. Inspection was also carried out at the Ogun State section of the rail project where mega stations are being constructed. So we think it's like this all over Nigeria and uh, I think people will be happy. Top of our effort to bring railway development issues to generate revenue to The minister said due to some obstructions, work from a Butemeta to a Papa section of the project is not up to 10%, unlike the Ibadan section that is 70% completed. Oyinaya Kaloka. And staying with the Center of Excellence, let's now join Michael for more trending uh, reports from that zone. Hello, Michael. Hello, Inure, and welcome to Lagos. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has heard how 1.8 billion naira was spent on supply of branded bundles of Wapa and Ankara to change for women initiative by Pigman Oil and Gas Service in the suit seeking final for future of $8.4 million and $7.4 billion naira linked to wife of former president, Patience Jonathan. Vera Chimuba has more. Three defense witnesses were led in evidence by Mr. Mike Uzokome and Abibio. The Southwest Coordinator of Women for Change Initiative, Kate Onechere, told the court that 1.8 billion naira was spent on supply of organizations branded Rapper and Accra. She told the court that President Jonathan, the founder of Women for Change Initiative, was made the sole signatory to the account on the resolution of the organization. Contrary to her testimony, one of the trustees of the organization, Yemisi Uluwole, had told the court that there was no such resolution appointing Mrs. Jonathan as the sole signatory to the account. Another defense witness and former head of service in the Ministry of Education, Bayelsa State, Taraja Uburu, also told the court that patient Jonathan was not in the payroll of the ministry and did not receive salary while she was on leave of absence. The former special assistant to former President Gulag Jonathan on domestic affairs, Dudafa, further gave evidence on various sources of funds and gifts received by patient Jonathan while in office. In Lagos, Vieira, Chumuba. The Nigerian army is emphasizing intelligence and tactical use of arms in addressing conflicts. At a seminar on conflict management in Lagos, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Buratai, re-emphasized Nigerian army places premium on fundamental rights. Nigerian Army places premium on fundamental human rights in discharging and scanter insurgency operations. Since the war against Boko Haram insurgency started in 2003, over 2 million people have been displaced according to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Although the Nigerian army is progressing in its counter-insurgency operations, protecting the vulnerable during peacekeeping operation is imperative to this seminar. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukul Buratai, represented by the Chief of Army Standards and Evaluation, said improving the skills of personnel and officers involved in tactical field operations will help in fulfilling its mandate of peacekeeping without violating the rights of the vulnerable. It should therefore cover the whole spectrum of activities from reorientation, stabilization, reorganization, rebuilding, 
and reintegration of the IDPs, among others. The training in conflict resolution strategies to the military as it now imbibes civil military cooperation as part of the military strategic concepts. Generating positive behavioral change among military personnel and improving civil military relationship for the protection of women and children were suggested. These required interagency collaboration. This workshop is designed to provide operators with soft skills they need in the field uh, apart from knowing how to use a gun, a weapon. We are helping them to acquire skills in things like communication, negotiation, mediation that we believe will further enhance the good work they're doing. The seminar, which is the ninth edition, is emphasizing tactical use of weapons and arms in conflict areas in the interest of the vulnerable and innocent citizens. Practicing fish farming will further boost the nation's GDP, reduce unemployment and contribute significantly to the nation's quest for self-sufficiency. This was the submission of aquacultural experts at the federal government's empowerment initiative program for fish farmers in Lagos. Annie Daniels has details. Available statistics from the Federal College of Fisheries and Marine Technology show that three quarters of every nation's economy come from the marine environment, Nigeria inclusive. However, due to natural and man-made activities, the desired results are not completely achieved. The fish are no longer producing, so to say, because we are catching at the high rate, uh, at the rate at which we are taking them from that water. So the only other alternative available for us is to be able to grow. All right, culture them in a controlled environment, and when you do that, you can produce as much as you want. This is why the federal government deemed it wise to embark on this empowerment and training program for women and youths in aquaculture in all the six geopolitical zones of the country. So after training them here today, they will also be able to uh, train others, thereby enhancing food security in the country in terms of fish production, in terms of uh, any more income to themselves, in terms of reducing unemployment and also reducing insecurity in the country. Participants, you are put through various aspects of fish production, table fish production technology, raw materials, sourcing and assembling, among others. We want to appreciate the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for doing this kind of a program. It, if this is being done time to time, very soon we will throw away the story of non-employment in Nigeria. At the end of the training, participants we are presented certificates and cash amounts to enable them to start up their fish farming immediately in Lagos. Annie Daniels, NTA News. That's a contribution from Lagos Nationwide continues after this timeout. Stay with us. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lot, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multi-purpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at plot 1710 Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3, Garikia, Buja, Sharon Ultimate Hotels, the ultimate place. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is Tolerance in Islam, to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, Da'awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall, River Road, Jabi Road East, Gorimi. 
Jerry, Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Barkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the Chief Host is His Excellency Malam Nasr Ahmed Er Rufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris, CFA, Emir of Zazo, the host uh, Malin Yakubin Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malam Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Osta Okechuku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, announced organizing committee. You are welcome. <laughs> You can follow us on all our social media platforms Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng/slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad. Or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News. Breaking the news for over 40 years. Good to have you back. The federal government says it has put a number of initiatives in place to boost the employability of graduates of tertiary institutions in Nigeria. The Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Anwoka, said this at the 13th Convocation Ceremony of the Namjazikewe University, Oka, when he represented President Muhammadu Buhari. After commissioning over 30 projects in the institution at the 13th Convocation Ceremony of the Namja Zikiwe University, Oka, President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented by the Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Anwoka, said government will remain unwavering in tackling the challenges of youth unemployment in Nigeria through initiatives such as the Empower, Bank of Industry Youth Entrepreneurship Support Programs, and Central Bank of Nigeria and Bank of Agriculture Support Schemes, and urge the graduates to key into these programs. These initiatives include what we are related to the enhancing education programs in the rural FGC agency. The intent of which is in the area to provide active power plants for selecting the tertiary institutions, but providing them with more students and the other power supply. 33 projects were commissioned. 20 completed and there are about 13 ongoing. But as you have been impossible without the intervention of the federal government. Chancellor of the institution, His Majesty the Jacob Gyang Buba, and the Pro Chancellor Al Haji Aziz Belu both commended the Vice Chancellor Professor Joseph Ahaniku for his efforts to project the institution academically and infrastructural development. I've also scaled and um, optimized um, the academic culture in this university and the uh, interest in research. The convocation for the 2017-2018 academic year witnessed the confirmment of PhD degree on 269 graduates, 763 for masters and 182 for postgraduate diploma. Three prominent Nigerians, the Obi of Onicha, Obi Alfred Achabe, Sa Emeko Ofo and Ambassador Babagadan Kingibe were also conferred with honorary doctorate degrees of the institution. In Oka, Joy Iluebu, NTA News. And still on education, concerned by the number of out-of-school children and the need to retain and encourage those in schools to read, a non-governmental organization, Explorers Book and Readers Club, has supported FCT School for the Blind. Abdullahi Suleja has details. Until recently, there was a belief that in this part of the world, people with special needs may not be productive. However, this notion is fast changing and pupils in this school uh, proven that there is ability in disability. Uh, that informed the FCT administration to establish the school for the blind, which houses visually impaired children or primary school age for learning. This brilliance made the Explorers Book and Reading Club to support them. I will want to encourage other well-spirited Nigerians, corporate organizations to please join hands with the government to ensure that children 
uh, taken back to school and that the indigent ones are actually retained in school. We have donated 100 packs of braille papers, which is the most needed instructional materials and some teaching aids to the school. This is the second time that the FCT School for the Blind is receiving the teaching and learning materials from the group which supports a children's school annually. Abdullahi Musa Sleja, NTA News. And now, looking at the judiciary, the National Human Rights Commission has pledged its commitment towards ensuring that due process is applied in the dispensation of justice. This was re-emphasized when a delegation of Georgetown University and University of Maryland, USA, visited the commission in Abuja. Omenka Amarachuku reports. The criminal justice system in Nigeria plays a critical role in the maintenance of law and order. Most of the times, people are being detained in the prison custody without trial, which contributes to the growing number of inmates in the prisons across the country. These delegations from Georgetown University and University of Maryland, USA, is in Nigeria to interact with the Commission on how best to improve on the justice system. A big piece of what we're doing here today is just sharing our experience using the clinics at Georgetown Law to do some of the heavy lifting in the legal representation and representing clients at arraignments, trying to get them home and in the community and keep them home. The experience we are going to get or the information we are going to get from them, we are going to share and tickle down to the authorities, let them know that it is not good for people to be kept almost as if we are permanently in the station without having a day in court. National Human Rights Commission has been part of various initiatives towards reforming the criminal justice system as well as decriminalization of petty offenses. In Abuja, Umenka Marjuku, NTA News. It has never been a better time for women in Nigeria. For instance, the percentage of female members of parliament has doubled 20 years on and still counting. Despite this, women in some countries are still relegated, especially in Africa. Nigerian women are always at the forefront in breaking new grounds in their chosen fields. President of the 73rd Session of United Nations General Assembly, Maria Espinosa, sustained this position during an interactive session with women from different shades of opinion at the National Center for Women Development, Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday was there. Besides the priorities of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly, global awareness creation for the recharging of the Lake Chad Basin, central to her engagements while in Nigeria was multilateralism. She was at the center's Hall of Fame. Maria Espinosa was taken through memorable of Nigerian women who made marks and recorded strides. Director General of the Center, Mary Ikberi Eta, piloted affairs during this historic ceremony. The president appended her signature as one of the center's high-level guests. We She implored the women drawn from all parts of the country to emulate those great Nigerian women. It is fantastic that you have a female senior special assistant to the president on the SDGs. I think this is a great example. At the United Nations, another Nigerian woman, Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, is spreadheading the Secretariat's efforts on the Sustainable Development Goals. Women hold the presidency of the General Assembly and the Economic and Social Council, and women also oversee all five UN regional commissions worldwide. The president, however, frowned at other countries where women are given only 60% equivalent access to financial services and where gender gap still exists, which is projected not to close until 2086. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Election Petition Tribunal in Oil State grants extension of time to respondents. For details, let's link up with Fatai in our Ibadan Network studio for details.
So I apologize uh, for lack of signals at the moment. As soon as signals are ready, we shall rejoin Ibado. Moving on, the recent guidelines issued by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFRU, on the withdrawal of local government funds has continued to elicit reactions from a wide range of commentators. While discussing the development on NGA's Good Morning Nigeria, guests welcomed the development but said it will not solve the problems completely until full autonomy is granted to the local government. Ololade Alayaki has details. Financial disbursement to local government has been a bone of contention that has incapacitated that tier of government from carrying out its activities for several years. With local government autonomy still far from being attained, the guidelines issued by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit on spending of local government funds, guests on the program say this will address some aspects of challenges of local government management in Nigeria. I think. What we are only advocating, and I'm, I'm, I'm a strong advocate of this, uh, of this desire, that the National Assembly should be the final decision-making body now, today, for local government to truly be what they are supposed to be. The regulation do, does not secure autonomy of funding directly to the local government, as long as Section 162, 7, and 8 are concerned. They also stress that, apart from achieving financial autonomy, the need to achieve autonomy in other aspects of local government is key to making the local government effective. The functions of local government as it were, in terms of their revenue sources, they should be left exclusively for them. This is a welcome development that we have a financial intelligence unit monitoring revenue accruing to local government. They called for the National Assembly to do the needful by revisiting the amendment seeking to guarantee local government autonomy, while the tax of monitoring should also be enhanced in Abuja, Ololade, Alayaki, NTA News. All right, Fatai in the border is ready now. Let's now join him. Hello, Fatai. Thank you. Welcome to Ibadan. Oyo State National and State Assembly Election Petition Tribunal has commenced its pre-hearing conference by striking out a respondent's reply to a petition filed by Honorable Sahid Fijabi of APC. Correspondent Abdul Rahouf Kamadin reports. The reply, which was a response to the petition filed by a serving Honorable Member Sahid Fijabi, challenging the outcome of Ibadan Southwest, Ibadan Northwest election which he lost to Olajide Stanley of PDP, was objected to by his counsel, saying it was filed out of time. The tribunal, led by Justice Dennis Yuse, struck out the reply for being filed out of the period allocated by law. The implication is that they can't call witnesses. They cannot cross-examine. They cannot do anything. The third respondent still retains some rights, which includes cross-examination of personal witnesses. Justice Anthony Apovi of the second panel also permitted counsel to the respondent in a petition filed by former Commissioner for Youth and Sports of your state, Farouk Alao of EPC, challenging the election of Uyekule Fola of PDP as member-elect of your state House of Assembly to replace the stamp affixed wrongly by a counsel who did not sign a court process. The tribunal maintained that the respondent is still within the time frame to do so. Also, the tribunal ordered the parties in a petition filed by APC against the winner of your substantive election, Dr. Kola Balogu of PDP, to exchange court processes ahead of the commencement of trial. Omi Bado, Abraf Kamal Din, NT News. Moving on, achievements of development at the local government level can be attained if the local government administration is revamped to ensure equitable distribution of resources at the third tier of government. This was the consensus of key players at the third Obasikiru at Daytona Professoria Chair Lecture held in Ijebode. Joel Pokola completes this story. The focal point of this year's lecture is grassroots governance, the soft underbelly of Nigeria's political architecture, delivered by Professor Ayo Ulukotun, who occupies the professorial chair. He identified a dysfunctional local government system as a major bin of development at the grassroots. <laughs> From door to door, 
is never getting home. Ogun State Governor, represented by his deputy, Mrs. Yetunde Ononuga, commended over Dr. Sikiru Kayode Adetono for the professorial chair initiative and congratulated him on his 85th birthday. There is no better way to celebrate our prayer party on his attainment of a right age of 85 than being part of his legacy. Ogun State Governor-elect Prince Dafo Abiodun joined other dignitaries in calling for local government reform. Are you both ensure that they are spending to perform their roles in accordance to the way it is enshrined in the Constitution? Aujale of Ijebu Land, Obasikiru Kayode Adetono, who is using the lecture to mark his 85th birthday, urged government to engage traditional rulers to accelerate development at the grassroots in Ijebu Ode. Joel Bukbola, NTA News. In another development, Assistant Inspector General of Police, Zone 11, in charge of Undo, Oyo, and Oshun State, Leye Oyebade has called for proactive police force and community policing, describing it as effective means of combating criminal activities in the society. He was speaking at a consultative forum held in Ibadan. Correspondent Shola Wahid has the report. The Assistant Inspector General of Police, Leye Uyibade, stressed the importance of community policing as a tool for effective crime combating. He admonished police officers to display exemplary courage, commitment, and dedication to duties while respecting and protecting the fundamental human rights of the citizens with the fear of God. Guests at the forum explained that the command has recorded good success at fighting crime and promised to support the police to achieve more success. AIG has brought everybody together so as to be able to know what exactly, what, what is the role and responsibility of each, each group. And this is a way that security will reach everybody. It will be a door to door, house to house networking. Residents are encouraged to always give the police useful information that will lead to reduction of crime in the society. In Ibadan, Shola Wahid, NTA News. That's our contribution from Ibadan. We now return you to Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. Many well, thanks for time. A popular Caramelo nightclub along TOS Benson Crescent in Otako district of Abuja has been demolished by the officials of the Development Control Department of the Abuja Metropolitan Management Council. The structure was pulled down Monday morning for a legal conversion of the building to commercial pebbles. Details with Shaibo Yakubu. That the Caramelo nightclub in Utaku district has been trending for the past few weeks. Specifically, on 17th April this year, a joint tax team stormed the premises of the club. This time around, for the illegal conversion of the building to commercial purposes, with several notices served with no positive response from the developer, the bulldozers of the Development Control Department pulled down the structures for contravening the provisions of the Abuja Master Plan. This place is a mark for development as a clinic to serve all this neighborhood. And the neighborhood is denied the benefit of this service as it is enshrined in Abuja Master Plan. We have followed due process by several relevant notices. And then um, when we got the wind of the revocation on Friday, we served a uh, demolition notice that same day giving them 24 hours to comply. The managing director, Caramelo Lounge and Seats, Max Eze, says adequate time was not given to enable him to pack his belongings before the demolition. Uh, we got a paper by on Friday evening by 7 o'clock. That's when they came here and served us. Okay. By the time I came back, they gave me the paper. It was already on weekend. A resident of the area, Professor Andra Wusawa, speaks on the development. This is an excellent development. Because we in this area would be able to have our normal sound sleep, which we have never had before since they started operating here. Briefing the media after the exercise, coordinator Abuja Metropolitan Management Council, Umar Shaibu, says the plot has now been revoked. He also added that two weeks' notice have been served Ibiza Club in Garki Area 11 to revert to its designated use or risk seeing appropriate sanctions.
Shwaibu Onuzea Kumbu, NTA News. And staying with uh, the nightclub issue, most nightclubs operating within the federal capital territory are not originally planned for their current locations. Those were the words of the acting secretary, FCT Social Development Secretary, Hajia Safia Umar, who said that raids on such illegal structures will continue in the territory. She gave this indication in an exclusive interview with Safia Nyoma Uche. It is surprising to note that the nightclub Caramelo, for instance, was originally meant for a hospital until it was converted and became what it is today. Hajia Safia Umar, Acting Secretary, Social Development Secretary, says the department has received several complaints ranging from noise pollution to loitering. We give them counseling and then we now uh, give them skill acquisition and then we discharge them back into the society. We only have discovered that there is a kind of spring up with impunity. People establishing nightclubs in residential buildings. She said the recent raids on nightclubs in the territory will reduce the use of illicit drugs and night crawling among the youths. On the side of the police, the command says it has received complaints and petitions from those arrested of police misconduct, which is currently investigated. The Commission of Police set up a high-powered committee to investigate this allegation. He further said that the police will continue to assist in the raids to rid the capital city of misgrants. A cross-section of the FCT residents have also reacted to the raids on nightclubs. I don't go to nightclubs, so if you ask me, I will not encourage it. So far, most of those arrested have been released on bail. Safia Noma Uchi, NTA News. Sokoto State takes delivery of Argentine cattle for breeding project. Details of this and other reports with Abdurrahman Usman Jabrila. It's over to you, Abdurrahman. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto. Sokoto State Government has taken delivery of 117 heads of hybrid Argentine cattle for its cattle breeding project. Rata Abdullahi has the report. The idea to establish the Argentine cattle breeding project, the first of its kind in the West African subregion, was conceived by the Sokoto State Government about 11 years ago. The project is among the ones being inherited by the current administration from the immediate past government in Sokoto State. The arrival of 117 heads of hybrid Argentine cattle from South Africa at the last consignment for the project as it reached about 98% stage of completion. I uh, was stunned to see the, the local breeds that you've got here because you've got excellent genetics. They might not be commercialized yet, but what you are doing here is you are going on that road. I'm also happy to tell you that these breeds can produce about 80 to 20 liters of milk daily. The project is expected to be a high supplier of large quantity of healthy milk meat for domestic and export purposes. So by the time it comes on stream, it is going to serve the whole of this sub-region. The project will also provide job opportunities to the teaming unemployed youth, expand the business and the revenue base of Sakota State. In Sakota, Balato Abdullahi, NTA News. Zamfara State is determined to create more conducive environment for farming in spite of security challenges in the state. Governor Abdulaziz Yari said this while launching the distribution of fertilizer for 2019 wet season farming. Haliru Muhammad Umar has the report. Zamfara State, which has the slogan, Farming is our pride, is vast in agricultural activities until it was confronted with incessant security challenges in recent years, which hampered the productivity of farmers who were forced to leave their farmlands for safety. In spite of these challenges, the state government has procured over 410 trailers lot of fertilizer and other farming inputs this year for distribution to farmers to boost agriculture in the state. The exercise is aimed at ensuring that farmers prepare for rainy season in good time. Each local government area would be 
for the the best installation of 25 prop. This is unprecedented in the history of, uh, of our state. In addition to, agro to agrochemical and improved seeds will be distributed to the farmers, inshallah. The state government will continue to support the federal government's policies on agriculture to ensure food security in the country. Consequently, this year's fertilizer distribution service will go directly to the farmers. Some farmers who spoke to NTA News expressed delight over the timely distribution of the fertilizer and other farming inputs, saying it will improve their productivity. In Gusau, Halir Muhammad Umar, NTA News. That's our contribution from Sokoto back to Nyeri in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Many thanks. You're still watching Nationwide on NTA. Let's pause for another break. We'll be right back shortly. NTA Television College JAWS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA state capital stations, zonal centers, or at the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JAWS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 Naira in bank draft in favor of NTA NTA TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatv.com. Vc.com or call 0803-3144-383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. Registrar announcer. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous, whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thank you for staying. Three countries within ECOWAS region tended their reports to ECOWAS Parliament, with Senegal saying it has ratified 44 ECOWAS protocols and conventions out of 54. Joseph Oruk reports that this was at the ongoing ordinary session of the Parliament in Abuja. Every year, countries within ECOWAS are expected to submit situation reports to the ECOWAS Parliament for consideration and possible advice while presenting the Senegalese reports 
A member of parliament from that country says the country is speeding up efforts to ratify protocols that are remaining for the country as directed by the ECOWAS authority of heads of states and governments and the Council of Ministers. The country has ratified and is fully compliant with 83% of ECOWAS protocols and conventions. The member of parliament representing Liberia says a five-year program between United States of America and Liberia to provide critical alert information and coordinate government's response for immediate intervention is having financial hiccups. This he said is because United States government and the ECOWAS Commission have not totally honored the memorandum of understanding for the project. Only refugee situation that is currently blooming currently looming in Liberia, released to those several unions who came to the country during the early days of the Liberian Civil War in 1991. The country reports on Syria alone shows that the political situation of the country has continued to improve after the 2018 general elections and that corruption still remains a challenge. The 2018 general elections petition cases for the Western area have, however, continued to linger in the courts, whereas the petition cases largely from the northern province have been thrown out of court for lack of substantive evidence. The alone is presently strategizing to counter any terrorism attempts. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTA News. Let's now talk sports and Kenai Magodike who feed us. Head coach of Nigeria's Super Falcons, Thomas Deneby, has listed 27 players for the final camp in Austria ahead of the eighth FIFA Women's World Cup finals bid for June 7 to July 7 in France. A final list of 23 players for the tournament will emerge towards the end of the scheduled two-week campaign in Austria, May 20 to June 4, with four players expected to be dropped. Super Falcons, who are currently competing in this year's Wafu B Women's Cup in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, will depart Austria June 4, direct to Rhymes, where they open their World Cup campaign against Norway June 8. Nigeria won a total of three medals comprising two gold and a bronze at the just-ended African Karate Federation Union Zone 3 Championships in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire on Sunday. Olarumbe Benjamin won gold in the individual kata event, while Ifanyo Gene clinched gold in the 67 kilograms event. The trio of Fabora Dimeji, Fabora Abola and Olarumbe Benjamin teamed up to win bronze in the kata team event. The five-day tournament, which ran from May 7 to 12, had eight countries, namely Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Benin Republic, Niger Republic, Liberia, Burkina Faso, and hosts Cote d'Ivoire in participation. In tennis, delighted world number one Novak Djokovic says he is back to his best after winning a third Madrid Open title on Sunday, beating Stefano Tsitsipas six.